Welcome to Boxing Hideout TV, home of the ass whooping. Make sure you like the channel or like the video and subscribe to the channel. I'm going to get that down right at some point. But today's topic for this episode. We're going to discuss Roly Romero once again and um, how come he gets to miss out on a million dollar payday. And our examples are going to be used to today are going to be uh, polar opposite extremes of uh, the sexual abuse um issues that plague professional athletes in this situation we're going to use boxers we're going to use bernard hopkins and sugar ray leonard as our subjects we're going to figure out what roley did wrong okay Welcome to Boxing Hideout TV. I am your host, Juice Eight 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 Eight, or Juice Berry, whichever one you feel comfortable calling calling me. Of course, um, welcome to Boxing Hideout TV, home of the ass whooping. Uh, today is just a, another great day in the world. Um, the subject is going to be a little weird, but it's uh, relevant to what's going on in today's society. Uh, and once again, things that didn't matter back then now seem to pop their, their heads out of the blue. And um, sometimes they come back to bite people on the ass. Roley Romero had a fight with Tank Davis scheduled. Roley is promoted by uh, uh, Mayweather Productions. Or and... Um, Roley's previous fight, he made a little bit over a hundred thousand. This fight, he would have made a million because those tickets were selling instantly. This was a fight that everyone wanted to see. Uh, I believe that Mayweather Promotions and his team didn't realize the star power Roley had and uh, his ability to sell a fight. It's a rare commodity in the sport. Uh, nowadays, everyone is scared to. Uh, behave wrong. But uh, Roley is a character and he built himself up to be a excellent prospect for making money for uh, Floyd's team. And so in what they did to get this fight, they couldn't make Tank Davis look scared, of course, uh, Roley. So what they did to protect their investment is what they all, what everyone always does. They send in the girls and the girls will say that um, I was attacked, I was abused, and all this stuff like that. And and there's usually some ultimatum, like, you got to give me this, or you got to do this, and I'll make this go away. Whatever he did, it didn't work. They brought it to someone's attention, and then it became a public issue, and now Roley had to give up his million-dollar payday. Uh, in the past, uh, a lot of fighters have done bad things and so I'm not excusing any of that sexual assault of any kind is uh, terrible it's not to patronize anyone it's not good it's a bad thing it's unnecessary um, if you cannot handle the woman it's best just to get out of there don't uh, put yourself in a bad situation uh, in this situation here uh, Roley loses out on a large payday but 
I'm cool with him because he said he wasn't fighting for the money anyways. He doesn't bring up money. Uh, he just brings up whooping ass. That's it. Just, I'm going to fuck you up. That's it. With that said, we have others who uh, in the spotlight become uh, famous for other reasons and so forth. And not to uh, take away what they've accomplished or anything like that or disrespect them in any way. Um, You have weird scenarios here. One, I'll give you one. Here's one where you have uh, Sugar Ray Leonard. Okay. In this article right here, uh, the writer obviously doesn't feel that Sugar Ray Leonard's story of uh, sexual abuse holds much weight. Holds much weight. Um, I've, I'm, I'm here to say that I, I don't know if it's. Uh, I, I believe he was liking it, and he was uh, more hiding that than he was the fact that uh, something happened at all. You know, that's just my theory. I don't, this, here's the story, uh, his version of the story, his 15 year old fighter. And he had a boxing coach and his boxing coach, uh, I guess made him take showers with other boys that were, um, I don't know if they had to rub each other down and lather each other up, whatever they did. But it was a sign that something was wrong because he didn't want to have to take the showers with this, these other boys while the coach just stared at him and lustfully, lustfully. Fast forward that to a moment in time. Now he's alone in a truck with the coach and the coach somehow another Zen unzips his pants from out of nowhere. This is the coach that had him shower on the boys and or whatever the case may be, whatever. Now the coach has unzipped his pants and gave him a few sucks. He, I can't believe, no, I can't believe you're doing this. And he gets out of the truck and runs away. And then the next day the coach calls and says, can I see some sugar again? And uh, can I get some more sugar? And then Sugar Ray Leonard's hiding under the blankets telling his mom, no, tell him I'm sick. I can't come. And so he never sees the coach again after that. The coach is dead now, and so Sugar Ray Litter doesn't have a reason to bring up the guy's name. That's his side of the story. But what about the other victims? Did you look for them? Did you see how they were doing? Are they okay? I, I, apparently this guy, hes he was their coach and he's been uh, molesting these kids. And, and, and I don't know if he's been molesting them or if he's just sucking their dicks. Either way, they might not have wanted that. Did you try to protect them? Did you go back and see if, if, if you know, like go back to the family of the coach and say, hey, you know, he was a coach at this time and he had this other guy in the shot. I mean, in, in Trent camp with us and, and then, uh, you know, and tell him, so he had us taking showers together. And I just want to know if that boy's okay, because he may not want to, to put soap on me. He may not have wanted to be in the shower with me, but uh, he was being forced to do so uh, apparently. I don't know, man. It's a weird story to me. Yeah, like I said, my, uh, my belief is uh, is that Sugar Ray actually liked the suckings, liked it, and he's really upset because the coach was no longer in his life, and he really needed that sort of uh, comfort, the comfort that only a coach that you're alone in a truck with uh, can provide you with. Sugar Ray Leonard wasn't raised by single parents. He had both of his parents. There was no reason for him to be alone in a truck with his coach. Why wasn't his dad picking him up from uh, from practice or dropping him off?
It's just a theory. Write a book about it and put it in a book years later. See if you can profit off of it some way. Uh, I guess, man. If you want to do it that way, then that's fine. All I'm saying is this. There's victims who didn't want their, their knobs polished by the coach. If you say the coach is gone and you can't do nothing about that, then please go find the victims and see if they're okay. That's it. Make sure they're fine, man. They may not want to talk about it. Say, hey, you know, remember the time we, the coach may have took a shower while he played with himself? It's terrible, man. If you're going to come out If you're going to come out in a book, I didn't, I don't know, man. Cloud chasing now and is getting to an all-time craziness, man. Who's, I mean, this is what it's come down to. Oh, uh, to sell my book, I got to tell these stories about how some guy slobbed me up in a truck when I was 15, I don't have to tell nobody who the guy is. I don't have to look for the other victims that I placed in this story of mine. Man, these guys, man, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. You got the other extreme. Bernard Hopkins is the opposite. He wasn't the victim. He wasn't the one getting his knob polished. Well, he might have, but he wasn't doing it as from the victim's perspective. I don't know. Uh, like I said, I, I wasn't in jail with him. And sometimes the reports you get from people are uh, different uh, versions of the story. You know what I mean? Sometimes people say they were molested when they really were willing participants. In this article, uh, written back some years ago, right before the the Tarver fight, it's, it references the Tarver fight. There is an issue at the press conference where uh, Bernard Hopkins states to Antonio Tarver, uh, "Quote: I used to see guys like him on D Block. Uh, no." Uh, I don't think it's the same D block as Jada Kiss and uh, Styles P and them, but if it is, uh, you guys got some explaining to do. Um, I used to see guys like him on D block. He would have been taking it in the ass every day. This is what Bernard Hopkins said to Antonio Tarver. I remember the incident. If someone can pull the video for this, I would really appreciate it. It seems that the only thing they have now is a chopped up version of it. When Bernard said this, Antonio Tarver went crazy. And from that moment on, uh, he pretty much, pretty much was Bernard's bitch. That comment right there threw the whole thing out of whack. All of a sudden, Antonio Tarver is, you know what I mean, worried about his uh, his status with the women, you know what I mean? But this article goes on to discuss uh, uh, Bernard's uh, exploits within the, the prison confines. Apparently his name was Soapy uh, because of uh, his ability to dominate other men in the prison system and, you know what I mean, and handle them. Okay, now, um, I'm going to send some people out to Philadelphia right now and see if we can find um, some of the victims from uh, some of Bernard's attacks. Uh, I know the old lady that he robbed to get in prison, uh, the, the Percy snatch, whatever he did, to get in prison for 10 years. 
is separate because um, robbing old women for purses is different than being inside of uh, a federal penitentiary and and uh, holding down uh, men who probably may not have deserved to be uh, abused by Bernard. You know what I mean? They may not have wanted that. With that being said, did the Tarver fight with Hopkins get stopped because of Harvard, uh, because of Bernard's comments about prison rape? Was there a Me Too movement? Was there a Me Too movement uh, to defend uh, Tarver? Did Antonio Tarver deserve to have his manhood questioned like that? He apparently was fit the stereotype of a man who Bernard sat and watched get molested. So you have Sugar Ray Litter on one side saying that he was got his knob polished and he was ashamed of it all these years and couldn't whatever he couldn't do. And then on the other hand, you and then on this extreme, this opposite extreme, you have a predator and Bernard Hopkins who strong-armed dudes in prison for ass. One of the gentlemen's name is Krusty Ann. That's what they call him. If someone in Philadelphia area can please find Krusty Ann for me, I would love to do an interview with him. I would like to find out one if he's okay and if he's forgiven Bernard for uh, all that happened while they were in the penitentiary together. You go there to do your time. You don't go there to have to fight off animals. Bernard Hopkins, man, this guy is something else. Prison rape is nothing to joke about at all. And all. there was a later fight that this, I'm going to show you the clip right here. This is Joe Kawasaki. During the fight uh, when he, with Bernard Hopkins, that's Bernard Hopkins is the one being bent over. During this fight, he did this little booty bust move to Bernard Hopkins. And later on, when they asked about it, he said this was... Um, this was uh, payback for all the disrespect towards uh, victims of prison rape. And Bernard finally got a taste of his own medicine. Now, that wasn't real penis that he was giving him. He gave him an ass whooping. He whooped his ass and bent him over prison style. See, it's not the same when you're the one doing the victimizing, but when you're the one that gets brutalized and you can't do nothing about it because the other guy is just as strong as you and can fight just as good as you, then what do you do in that situation, Bernard? You fold up. Those men in, those men in prison deserve better. They didn't need you or anyone else taken something from them that they didn't they didn't ask for it they didn't they didn't volunteer their ass to you so then when you look at someone like Sugar Ray Leonard what do you see in him if you see Antonio Tarver as someone that is 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 food food in jail then you got to you got to look at this poor guy in Sugar Ray Leonard who has been running around lost for years Sugar Ray Leonard's been lost for years. Drug problems, all kinds of stuff. No one helped him. No one said, hey, Sugar Ray Leonard, you know, we want to give you some rehab. We know your coach took advantage of you. I encourage any, all of you, male or woman, if someone uh, touches you wrong or does something bad to you or violates you in any way, Please don't hide it for 30 years. Please just go tell somebody. Even if the situation's bad, you're going to look like the bad person. Don't have predators running the street unchecked. 
if they get questioned one time about it and then they do it again, this the second time, even if, if they don't know and believes in the first time, at least the second time, it's like, okay, it can't, this can't keep going on. There's examples for, like people like Michael Jackson is, is obviously easy target for rape allegations. But Antonio Tarver is a professional fighter. For him to get molested in prison is something else. But it, what, what's even worse is you didn't try to help the victim. You sitting here saying that these dudes used to get molested in in in, in jail. Maybe you're not saying that. They, all you say is they used to take it up the ass. Maybe it was the gay section of the jail. Did you help? You could have, you're strong enough. Or did you participate? Were you the ringleader? Were you the orchestrator of these assaults? Someone has to find out about this. Someone has to bring this up to him. Ask him about Soapy. I'm, it's not. It's more than one place you can reference that. Where there's smoke, there's fire. Anyways, this is Boxing Hideout TV. I'm your host, Juice 8888. We here at Boxing Hideout TV are only here to satisfy you and your cravings for the real information. Um, We don't like uh, thieves and people who steal from us and, and take our ideas and concepts you know, our words and, and, and our, our topics and try to use them for your own. You know what I mean? There's these bums at the 13th round.com. If you're ever there, <clears throat> these suckers, man. Some of the dudes that there, man, are perpetrators. And um, I don't need to get into it. Just uh, Just understand that some of the stuff that you hear, some of these podcasters saying they surf online for this information and they heard it from a uh, legendary player such as myself in this game and so we want to make sure that the original uh people get credit for being the the orchestrators of this movement uh i'm proud of all the young dudes who are coming up doing it there's a lot of good boxing podcasts right there i don't want to uh go into that detail uh one day i'll probably Give shouts out to the ones I respect. I like the Porter Way podcast very much. I've brought that up quite a bit. But other than that, um, I'm signing out for this episode. And I just want to make sure you guys uh, go to boxandhideout.com and register there. And uh, sign up with uh, the the people there and have discussions there. And and, uh, hopefully everything uh, goes your way. They may be assholes sometimes. Just defend yourself. You don't got to put up with it. All you do is give them the middle finger and keep that conversation going. Other than that, um, like, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like the video. Uh, we would appreciate it. The more the merrier. And uh, I'm Juice8888. I'm signing out, but I'll be back again with uh, more information as it comes in. But uh, this episode right here is dedicated to all victims of uh, sexual assault and all people who were falsely accused of sexual assault. Both crimes are just as bad. They both hurt and sting reputations for years to come. We want to be better than that, people. There's no reason to uh, force yourself on somebody who doesn't want you. Go get someone who does. There's always somebody out there for you. You may think they're fat. You may think they're ugly or need both of their legs. Either way there for you take advantage of what is there for you to take advantage of do not sexually assault anyone keep your hands and your mouth to yourself peace
All right. See you the next time around. Boxinghideout.com, Boxing Hideout TV, home of the ass whooping. Signing out.